Hello guys, it's Carbot Rhino and welcome to one more Play It Right video. Today I'm gonna teach you how to play Unicorn Fever by Horrible Guild. I'm using the digital version of a game in Tabletopia, but this tutorial is also good if you have the physical version of the game. So Unicorn Fever is a racing game taking place in a magical realm over the rainbow where rhinos um, unicorns race and players place bets on them to win glory and gold. In the championship, players will sign contracts with shady creatures of the fairy realm to hire their services and turn the odds of the race in their favor. They will play magic cards to try to fix the race and they might have to ask the elf mob for loans. So let's see step by step how to play Unicorn Fever starting with the board and the setup. We have six unicorns of different color, each on their own racetrack, and for each one of them we see the odds. For the first round, they are randomly determined. It starts at the top with the fastest unicorn, giving you a payout of two times your bet if it wins, going all the way down to the slowest, which is more unlikely to win, but gives a much bigger payout of seven times your bet. For each round, the slowest unicorn, the one at the bottom, needs to have their card flipped to their fever side, which gives them a special ability for the race. Here we see the stacks of the different action tokens with the smaller ones on top, which are also the ones giving you better things, and further down they go bigger but less generous. We also have the bet tokens for each unicorn color. The upper ones are the win bet tokens and you get them if you want to bet that the corresponding unicorn will win the race and below there are the show bets. With these you can bet that the unicorn of that color will show on the podium as in finish first, second or third in the race. In every round of the game there are three available contracts for the players which offer some permanent abilities once acquired. There is several clans of contract cards. You only use two of them for the contract card deck of each game. Last, each player will get a hand of five magic cards and 20 gold. Also, each player gets to own one unicorn. Starting with the first player, so the player with the carrot and going clockwise, they get an owner tile corresponding to the unicorn with the worst odds available. So the unicorn with the times seven odds goes to the first player, the one with the times six odds to the second, and so on. In Unicorn Fever, players are not represented by a color or a unicorn. They are simply wagers that are standing along the racetrack and they place their bets for glory and gold. What your ownership tile offers you is a small bonus. You get that bonus whenever your unicorn shows on the podium, no matter if you placed a bet on it or whether it was successful or not. And now we are ready to actually start. The game is played over four rounds. Each round consists of three phases. First, we got the planning phase where the players get to do their actions. Then we have the race where you get to see those unicorns run. And last, we have the results phase in which you get your payoffs and you prepare the board for the next round. Before we go into the details of each phase, uh, I want to talk about the basic mechanic of the game, which is the bet system. Uh, win bet means that you bet on a unicorn to finish first. You place the amount of gold you want on the win bet token you have taken. And if that unicorn wins the race, you gain your bet amount times the odds. So in this case, if I bet on the blue unicorn, I get four times my money. Additionally to that, I get five glory as well. A show bet means that you bet on a unicorn to finish first, second or third. These are less risky than the win bets, but they're also less rewarding. They give you always a fixed multiplier of double the money you bet. If you have set up a game for three or less players, you only have one line of show bets called the early show bets. But if you're playing with four to six players, you also place these tokens, the late show bets. They are basically the same, but the difference is that the early show bets give you an additional three glory when the unicorn shows at the podium, while the late show bets only give you two glory when you win a show bet. Now, in the planning phase, each player gets to do three actions, performing only one action on their turn in turn order. The available actions are shown on the tokens and players can only take the top token 
of each category. Whenever you see this symbol, it means you can play magic cards from your hand to any of the unicorns in the racetrack and try to fix the next race. Magic cards are played always face down and they are revealed before the race starts and resolved before and during the race. They can influence the performance of the unicorn you play them on in a positive or negative way. For example, they can give that unicorn a head start or prevent a unicorn from sprinting. These tokens allow you to actually place your bets. These are for placing a win bet and these allow you to place any bet. To place a bet, decide which unicorn you want to place a bet on, take the bet token for the type of bet you want, and place the amount of gold you want to bet on it. Even if the tokens get depleted, you can always place any bet, as its symbol is printed on the board and you have the possibility to take that action. These glory points on the tokens are taken from the bank and they are also placed on the bet token together with the gold you bet and if the bet is successful, you also get to keep the glory to yourself. This token allows you to get a contract card. The first one has no cost, but after it, you have to pay to get a contract. When you acquire a contract card, it comes into play immediately and it will grant you a permanent benefit for the rest of the game. Last, the carrot will make you the first player. At the end of this planning phase, you will receive the first player token and get to be first player in the following race. One additional but very important thing is the loans. Whenever you need to, you may ask the elf mob for a loan of 20 gold. You'll get the gold right away, but you'll have to eventually repay it with an interest. By the end of the game, you need to repay to the elf mob 25 gold. Taking a loan does not count as an action and you can do it anytime during the game. And after the planning phase is over, it's time to finally see those unicorns in action. You first reveal all the magic cards played on each unicorn. Then, one unicorn at a time, you check if there are conflicting magic cards, so pairs of one positive and one negative magic card marked with the same letter at the top left corner. If these cards, for example, were on the same lane, they would cancel each other out, so you would discard both of them. Then, you check the effects of all remaining magic cards that may need to be applied immediately. After this, you shuffle the movement deck and begin the race. One race turn consists of three steps. The first is to reveal a movement card, the second is to roll the sprint dice, and the third one is to check for the finish line. You keep playing race turns until all of the unicorn miniatures have crossed the finish line and have been placed in the race ranking. So, starting a race, I reveal the first movement card. This card indicates a specific movement value from 0 to 4 for the different odds, so red moves 3 spaces, yellow 2, and so on. You can apply the movements of the unicorns in any order, but all movements are considered to be simultaneous. And then, after all unicorns have been moved, the first player rolls the sprint dice. The unicorns that match the colors rolled each move one space forward. After applying the effects of both the movement card and the sprint dice, if a unicorn has reached or crossed the finish line, that unicorn has completed its race. You move its miniature to the highest available space of the race ranking. If more than one unicorns have crossed the finish line during the same race turn, a unicorn that moved more spaces beyond the finish line ranks higher. In case of a tie, the unicorn with the higher odds gets to win the tie, and if the tie is still unresolved, then the first player decides which unicorn gets to arrive first. Once the race is over and all the unicorns have been placed in their ranking spot, we have yet a few steps to carry out for the results phase. First of all, players get the payoff for their bets. Starting with the first player and going clockwise, each player declares whether their bets were successful and which ones were successful and which ones were not. Any gold that was spent on unsuccessful bets is immediately discarded to the bank. For each successful bet, you collect gold, depending on whether it was a win bet or a show bet, and also depending on the amount of gold you bet. You also get the corresponding glory and the bonus that comes from your owner tile. You then put back all of the bet and action tokens and you pay the glory tax. 
The glory tax, unfortunately, taxes you, well, because you are glorious. You must pay the bank an amount of gold equal to the number of glory tokens you currently own. Before moving on to the next round, you must update the odds for all unicorns. Starting with the unicorn who ranked first and going downwards, for every unicorn that ranked higher than their odds token, you move their token up one row on the table. For every unicorn that ranked lower than their odds token, you move the token down one row on the table. After the odds are determined, we get to see which unicorn or unicorns will be in fever state for the next race. The slowest unicorn is the one with the unicorn fever, so you flip their card to the fever side and make sure all of the other unicorns are with the normal side up. And last step of the results phase, you discard any remaining contracts and reveal three new ones, and you move the round counter one space forward. After the fourth race is over, it's time for the players to see who is the winner of the championship. First, you start by paying your debts. For each elf mob loan you received, you must pay 25 gold to the bank. Then all players who have gold in their pool, they have to convert it into glory. For each 20 gold you give, you take back one glory token and keep any gold leftovers in your pool. Then each player adds up all of their glory tokens plus any granted from the contract cards. As a rule of thumb, at the end of the game, the player with the least amount of unpaid loans is the winner. If there is a tie, which is a very likely case, then the player with the most glory is the winner. If there is still a tie, then the player with the most gold is the winner. And if there is still a tie, well, you just share the victory. So this was Unicorn Fever. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the explanation of the game. If you did, then you could also subscribe to my channel because there's lots of new videos coming and make sure to press the bell to get the notifications. And I'll see you in the next video.